Well, hello, I'm Jordan Jenkins, and I'm with the ARC Westchester. Welcome to our Tech Ambassadors webinar. If this is your first time in our webinar series, let me provide you with a little background. Uh, at ARC Westchester, we've been exploring everyday personal tech since 2014, trying to discover ways it can help the people that we serve each day. These Tech Ambassador sessions are quick learning experiences, and when I say quick, I mean quick, that feature an app or learning idea with some practical tips on how to best use them in your home, at day services, programs, and vocational settings in the community, wherever. If uh, anybody during the course of this has any comments and stuff, feel free to send a chat, raise your hand for a question, whatever. If you uh, take a look at the screen now, you can see that this is our URL for our technology page. And if you go to that, you can find lots of our recorded webinars from the past. And it may be helpful to you along with lots of other resources. I wanted to especially mention we have a fourth annual Tech Supports for Cognition and Learning conference coming up on March 28th 2019 at our community partner site, Mercy College in Dobbs Ferry, New York. It's a great day of learning about technology, and I'm talking about practical technology. I'm re really reaching out to the audience of the Tech Ambassadors and anybody that you might know that has a story about how personal technology has benefited them. I would love to have you present at our conference or be included in some way in the conference. I'm really looking for practical ideas, things that will help people today. So if you're interested, at the end of the presentation, you'll see my contact information. Send me an email, give me a call. I'd love to talk to you about what you're doing and find out how we can feature it in the work that we do. Today's topic, we're talking about a great app the Sensory Light Box, which has been developed by a developer called Cognable in the UK. It's very affordable. I think it's under four bucks. And it provides some really great experiences. And it's unusual in that it's available under a lot of different operating systems. It's available under the App Store, the iOS Store, but also the Android and Kindle services. And so what is the Sensory Light Box? Originally it was developed for teens with autism, but as more and more people have used it, lots of folks of all different ages have found it to be really, really interesting and has tremendous sound and graphics, which I'll demonstrate towards the end of this talk, that can be used by anybody of any age. Lots of times I know working with people, you know, fine motor control is a real issue. Sometimes if you can't press a particular area of the screen, it kind of defeats the purpose of the whole app. This is a wonderful app in that you don't need real discreet fine motor control. And you can use up to five fingers. And you get immediate feedback through colors and sounds, really great stuff. If you need switch input, it's possible to configure it for there, for it, and it has a lot of customizing features in it so that you can make it just right for the person using it. Here's the screen when you open up the app, and it gives you a series of buttons that you can hit. There's, I think, 30 in total. It's quite impressive. There's two screens of this. And, you know, things like mumbling, which is, as you would guess, a whole bunch of mumble balloons, stars, glow worms, whatever. You could use this as a stress reducer, as a reward for somebody. It's a great way to get somebody really comfortable and excited about using a tablet. You can see immediate cause and effect reactions. Uh, you can... Use it for a lot of lifelong learning circumstances, which we'll talk about. And I think the most powerful thing is when you can hook it up to a smart board or to a smart TV 
and use it on a large display, have people come up and use it on the iPad, but everybody will see this enormous display and there'll be plenty of oohs and ahs. So here's the other screen of the two. Flowers, leaves, rain, snowflakes, blowtorch, lots of great stuff. As you can see on the screen, hopefully you can see that the video is flowing nice and simply. It gives you audio. It gives you visual feedback. And all these designs are created just by using your fingers on this blank blue screen. You can use one finger or all five. Here's an undersea uh, display, submarines and fish. And here we are. This is coming very soon over here in the nor northeast, some snowflakes. And again, all these images are random. I'm just taking my finger and drawing it around the screen. So uh, you have an awful lot of possibilities. Nothing is quite the same from one experiment to the other. And here's another example coming up stars that are exploding. If you could hear the sound on this, for some reason it didn't work on the video, but it's like an explosion that you would hear during the July 4th. So it's pretty exciting. Pop, pop, pop. Cool stuff. And balloons floating through the air. One or two, many, depends upon how many fingers you use. Cool program. I mentioned learning before. Yeah, it's fun just to play around and kind of goof off and just move your hands around. But, you know, everybody learns. Some people learn at a very different pace. My daughter learns at a glacial pace. But it's important to remember everybody learns. So let's give them some things to think about. On the screens that you saw with the snowflakes, the leaves, the fireworks, you know, we could talk about seasons. What seasons are these associated with? Right now, you know, we're in fall, leaves are on the ground, you know, you could tie it all together with the images that you're seeing on the screen. What season do you like? Do you like the fall? Or is winter your favorite? Or do you want summer again? Why? Do we have any personal control of the seasons? Oh, it's too cold. Well, you're just going to have to wait, I guess. You can have some interesting discussions. On the undersea image of the submarines and the fish, you can start a whole discussion. And, you know, the simplicity or complexity of this depends upon your audience. But what kind of things live under the sea? Uh, do we near live nearby any bodies of water? Here over in New York, where this webinar is coming from, you know, we have the Hudson River. We have the Atlantic Ocean, the Long Island Sound. We're surrounded by water wherever you look. Has anybody in the group that's watching this Sensory Light Box app have any of you gone to the beach and swam in the water? Did you like it? Do you know how to swim? Is that something that you want to learn how to do? And those balloons. We just saw one of the last things of those balloons rising up into the air. I bet you could ask 15 people on the street, how does that work? And they may remember their science class in school, but you know, it's hot air that goes into the balloon. And where's the steering wheel on the balloon? How do you steer it? How do you get down from the balloon? And how do you go up? All these complicated questions, and I'm sure you could apply the same thing to other of the screens. You know, like there's that whole window for mumbling. What's wrong with mumbling? Well, nobody can hear you if you mumble. You wanted to speak distinctly so that you're heard. All these things provide great opportunities for learning, not just having a lot of fun with visual aids and 
audio feedback, but you're actually learning. I'd really encourage you to take a look at this app. It's been a hit with anybody that I demonstrated it to. It's an awful lot of fun. That's it for me today. I'm going to uh, do another webinar on 1023 next Tuesday, and I hope you'll join us for that one. Thanks for being part of this. Please remember, if you want to help us out with this conference, you folks out there are in the trenches. You know how you're using tech. Let me know if there's something that might interest you that you would like to present at our conference. Okay? Thanks so much. Have a great day. Mm -hmm.